1-800-548-9696. On Thursday, July 26th at 7 p.m., Radical Women presents The War on Women and the Battle to Save Cal Works. Cal Works, a benefit program for low-income parents, has been drastically cut. This panel discussion will focus on strategies to rescind these budget cuts and build a movement to fight all social service cuts. This event will take place at New Valencia Hall, 747 Polk Street in San Francisco. $2 to $5 donation requested. For details, call 415-864-1278. The community calendar is produced by members of the First Voice Apprenticeship Program. Send your listings at least three weeks in advance to KPFA Box 51, 1929 Martin Luther King Jr. Way in Berkeley, California, 94704. Or email us at calendar at kpfa.org. Tell us if your event is wheelchair accessible. To hear this calendar again, call 510-848-6767, extension 621. This calendar is also online at kpfa.org. You're listening to KPFA, KPFB in Berkeley, or KFCF in Fresno, or online at kpfa.org. It's 701, and up next is Full Circle. Stay with us. Welcome to Full Circle, your cultural affairs radio magazine. It's produced by the apprentices of the First Voice Media Action Program. On tonight's show, a very exciting show. I'm so happy. Very exciting. A brief history of the origin of the Juneteenth celebrations, musical sounds from the 25th annual Juneteenth celebration um, that was held in Berkeley, California on June 24th this year. We're going to hear interviews from the folks, p- people, the community groups, and other vendors and attender- attendees of the uh, Juneteenth celebration. And this is a fun drive. We're going to come to you and ask for your support later. You need it. You need it. All that and much more. Tonight's on the mic. You have Orca and Joy. Keep it locked right here. 94.1, your free speech community radio. All right. So tonight we're going to take a trip back in time. Just to a few short weeks ago. Um, we're going to hear sounds from the 25th annual Juneteenth celebration held right here in Berkeley, California. 25 years of this. Wow. Uh, many of you know about the Juneteenth and many of you don't. So we're going to talk about Juneteenth, what the celebrations are about, um, why here in Berkeley. We're going to talk to some of the organizers and... We're going to talk to people who attended the festival and were full of the full of the liberation freedom spirit that day. It was a great event, marvelous yeah. event. But we're going to start with a short story about the orig- origins of the Juneteenth celebration. And this is by our own, Full Circle's own, Orca Raptala. Juneteenth is the oldest known celebration commemorating the end of slavery in the United States. Dating back to 1865, it was on June 19th that the Union soldiers, led by Major General Gordon Granger, landed at Galveston, Texas, with news that the war had ended and that the enslaved were now free. Note that this was two and a half years after President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, which had become official January 1st, 1863. The Emancipation Proclamation had little impact on Texans due to the minimal number of Union troops to enforce the new executive order. However, with the surrender of General Lee in April of 1865 and the arrival of General Granger's regiment, the forces were finally strong enough to influence and overcome the resistance. Later attempts to explain the two-and-a-half-year delay in the receipt of this most important news have yielded several versions that have been handed down throughout the years. Often told is the story of a messenger who was murdered on his way to Texas with the news of freedom. 
Another is that the news was deliberately withheld by the enslavers to maintain the labor force on the plantations. And still another is that federal troops actually waited for the slave owners to reap the benefit of one last cotton harvest before going to Texas to enforce the Emancipation Proclamation. All of which, or neither of these versions, could be true. Certainly, for some, President Lincoln's authority over the rebellious states was in question. For whatever the reason, conditions in Texas remain status quo, well beyond what was statutory. Slavery was always on my mind as a child. I knew what livestock was, and I knew that African Americans were considered that a mere 180 years ago. I always thought the call to freedom would have been too much for me. In the times of slavery, I would have ended up maimed, dead, or free. Wow. I'm free. I'm liberated. Thank you, Orca. Yeah, you're very welcome. Man, so few of us know our history, and and the few who do um, need to be reminded of it. Yes. And you you will agree, for us, the history of African Americans in this country has always been one of hardship, struggle, and survival. Ultimately, survival, though. Very true. Very true. And we are liberated. We liberate ourselves. No one can take our freedom. Very true. So, we're resilient people, and we've been put on this earth to do something. Yes. That's very true. (laughs) Very true. And there's still a great need to celebrate life and freedom and liberation. Your purpose and your belief. I'm proud and happy to be black. Me too. All right. Thank you for that piece. You're very welcome. Now next, we're going to hear from Clifford Williams, one of the organizers of the Juneteenth celebration. Our interview team at the event that day included current KPFA apprentices, Afale, Aquila, Joseph, and yours truly, Orca Raptalon. My name is Clifford Williams. I do public information for the festival. I've been doing it for the last few years, and this looks like it's one of our best bang-up years because we've got so many people out here. It's beautiful weather. That's great. You said it's a silver anniversary that has been here for 25 years? Yeah, the guy by the name of R.D. Bonds and the owner of People Bazaar over here on Adeline. His name is Sam Dyke. Together they started this about 24, now 25 years ago because they thought that the community needed a sense of identity and a sense of a culture to bring people together. And that's how this uh, uh, festival started. How do you reach out to these people to come through and do what they do here at the Burger Jones Team? Well, a lot of the people here are the nonprofits as well as the people who are, are selling food, food vendors. A lot of these are repeat people that have been here in years past uh, and the majority of them are actually merchants along the street and throughout uh, the Berkeley area. So they know a lot. They know about this, and they come each year to support the community and give back what uh, the people have given them. So, th- and the word spreads each year, gets wider and wider. And so, you know, we're 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 happy with today's turnout, and it looks like it's going to be even better. It's only midday, and we're going to be here until uh, six o'clock. Wow. So I see you have a beautiful picture of a woman on your flyer. It's talking about we're still standing. What is what does that mean? We're still standing means. A lot of festivals have came and gone, not only in Berkeley, but throughout the Bay Area. The Berkeley Juneteenth Festival uh, in its 25th year is still standing strong, while other ones have fallen to the side or for whatever reasons, budgetary reasons or uh, loss of interest. But the uh, Berkeley Juneteenth, we're still standing. The lady on our poster this year, her name is Califinia, or you could pronounce it Califia. She's a uh, black Amazon warrior that many believe that uh, the state of California was named after her. So Juneteenth is like a family affair, right? Well, yeah, pretty much just like 4th of July or Cinco de Mayo or the uh, Asian Festival in San Francisco. It's an opportunity to look at the heritage and culture of African Americans. But as you can see out here, we have just about every ethnicity that you could possibly imagine out here. So we're here celebrating all of us together. The key thing is these people come together in unity. They come together in brotherhood. They come together loving each other as a community and as a people. When that happens, you have events like this 
and continue to move forward. And as long as the people continue with that frame of mind and philosophy, we're going to continue to have festivals such as this. Okay. So is there anything people can do to uh, volunteer for the next June scene? We're always looking for volunteers to come out to the festival. And so, uh, once again, you can call the uh, Juneteenth headquarters numbers by 10 or go to the um, People's Bazaar, where Mr. Dyke is the um, founder of this festival. We can give you more information. And finally, you can go back and check the www.juneteenth.org for more information. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for having us on here. I really appreciate it. Wow. See, now that's exactly what we need. More history, more history, more history. We need lineage, you know, because our people, uh, classically, it was a a, a linear or, a, excuse me, a spoken word history. Yes. And uh, when we try to, like, reach back for it, we have a harder time than a lot of other cultures. So. But our elders are there. They are. And, and they hold it down. That's who we need to reach for extremely. And, uh, you know, it was, you know, talking about that sharing, you know, that dancing, that community building, that's all the things that we need to be paying attention to. Right. And now... That was Clifford Williams, and if you want to volunteer for Juneteenth, I'm going to give that number again really quickly, 655-8008, or go to People's Bazaar, or Juneteenth.org. Yes, definitely. Now, let's get into uh, one of our interviewees. It was, oh, it was an awesome time at Juneteenth once again. I had the, the um, pleasure of interviewing this individual. He's very, very talented. This is Kevin Choice doing what we MCs like to call freestyling. Acapella freestyle off the mind right now in the moment. I have no opponents. It's just me in the mirror. I'm trying to get my mind clearer. Be a little fresher in my vision because I'm living. 2012, it's like I'm facing hell. I'm trying to dwell a little higher. I'm on fire. Juneteenth, what it does it mean to me? My freedom. Care choice, you better believe them when you see them. I'm speaking the truth. I'm from the root, from the bottom. And I'm always going to rock them, taking them to different perspectives. In November, I should be elected as official. Kevin Choice on the mic, it'll be beneficial. If you listen to me, because I hit him like a pistol. But my weapon is the knowledge. I went to college, you need to follow. Slavery was abolished. For three years, they didn't let him go. But now you gotta know that I'm about to kick open the door. For all the people behind me, I'm about to lead them. I'm about to teach them. This is food, I'm gonna feed them. This is like a smorgasbord. This is gourmet. This is lyrical style. I'm one of the best in the bay, but you wouldn't know it. I'll be playing Beethoven. I'm a poet, and I'm gonna show it. I'm about to grow this to the highest 3,000 miles. I got 3,000 styles in one child, yeah. Right on KPFA, and we can rock it all night, all day. It's for the bay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo! Camp Choice. Camp Choice exclusive man, over here. Again, bro. Rap, man. I start off rapping, man. Just let y'all know, man. It's piano. Bobby <laughs> rapping. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. See, it's hard for an MC to be able to do that nowadays. If you're an MC, that's something you should be able to do off the top of your brain and not need any practice, not need any auto tune. Once again, that was Kev Choice freestyle straight from the KPFA booth at the Juneteenth, 25th annual Juneteenth in Berkeley. Okay, onward through the day. The next um, piece we're going to hear is an interview with Marilyn Smith from All of Us or None. And this is a very, very impressive organization, and this sister was rocking it. My name is Marilyn Austin Smith. I have actually been a part of All of Us for None for seven years. This September will be eight. All of Us for None was founded 2002. Um, it extended from an organization that was called Timers. We are an organization that's founded by formerly incarcerated people that believe in policy change. We try to stop discrimination for people that's coming out of prison that don't have any rights. Actually, we think the prison industrial complex is a modern-day slavery. Mm, that is true. I, I believe that myself. And what do you do when you're uh, tabling? What do you do with the, the people that pass by? Well, you know, the name speaks for itself, all of us or none. And as a community, we have to get out and let people know that there are people out here that are working for people that's behind bars. Once you're inside a prison, you lose everything. You come home, you have absolutely nothing. Our families are poor. They can't come visit us. <laughs> they can't afford it. They can't send us money, and some of us don't even know how to read or write. So with saying that, we're letting people know that we have people that can read and write for you. We um, have um, we go up to the prisons. We have family day where we take families. We're working with the lifers. Um, we're also working with realignment. We do clean slate. 
Um, we also um, do a community give back once a year that we give free bikes away and helmets for children whose parents are incarcerated. And we give the people inside a family photo of their child with the bike and say, hey, I'm not there, but look, they gave this to my child for me. And we want to continue to do that, and we want to hopefully expand. We have 10 different um, chapters to across the country, and so we're trying to grow. We want people out there to know that we exist and we're here. Can you explain what Clean Slate is? Because I, I, I know what it is, but people on the radio might not know what Clean Slate is. Clean Slate is where um, people come. Once a year, we get together with Congresswoman Barbara Lee from the 9th District. We have a huge clean slate once a year where we expunge people records. We have attorneys and um, judges on staff that day, and we also do DMV. So uh, do you go in the prison, the women prisons as well as men prisons, or is it just one particular prison that you go? All of us are none, both, okay. That's awesome. wherever they are. Can you tell us or share with us um, what Juneteenth means to you? We have really struggled through the years. And if you guys are aware with Michelle Alexander, the new Jim Crow, that shows and explains a lot in her book about the new man and the new woman and what's happening today about modern-day slavery. So to me, this is a part of celebrating with our people, no matter what your ethnicity, that we can all get together and celebrate this day of what our forefathers and our ancestors left for us. See, we're still young, so we have to represent what they put down because the youth today are we're not doing it. So somebody's got to do it. It's like our ancestors get to meet each other again through us. That's it. <laughs> They're living through us. Is there anything else that people need to know about All of Us or None, and how can they find you? Well, actually, we have a general membership meeting every third Thursday, 1904 Franklin Street, downtown Oakland, on the third floor at 630 third floor conference room. We're asking everyone to come out and join us. We do not close our doors or refuse anyone. Also, um, I would like to just say to everyone, thank KPFA for really being there for the people because without you guys, we wouldn't really have a collective. Oh, thank you. We thank y'all for <laughs> your uh, services and just you know spreading that love like this. And the work that you're doing is really great. Thank you very much. So are you guys. Keep it up, young people. Power to people. Power, Power to, to the people. people. Yes, mm -hmm. woman after my heart. <laughs> taking care of people who have the least. Marilyn Austin Smith, all of us or none. Yeah. And she's just an example of the wonderful, beautiful people you hear on a CD that we've compiled of the occasion, of the event, of the Juneteenth celebration, the 25th annual. We have put together a packet to offer you to support us mm -hmm. here at Full Circle and, of course, KPFA. Your free speech community radio station, I say it all the time and I mean it, mm -hmm. we get everything we need from you. You out there listening to us now within the sound of our voice. And we need you to help us right now. I'm going to give out some phone numbers first. 1-800-439-5732 or 510-848-5732. I want you to call us right now. Say, hey, KPFA, yes, I support the work that goes on here. Yes, I love the idea that you go out and record Juneteenth and bring it back for the people. Yes, I love the idea that you provide a training program for all people to come into the community radio station. The only way it happens, the only way it happens is if you support us, and I need you to show that support right now. Go to the phone, 1-800-439-5732. Pick up a liberation pack that we have compiled of, of um, momentum, m mementos from the event, from the 25th celebration of Juneteenth here in Berkeley. We got T-shirts, and they're very unique, handmade, special, just-for-you kind of items that you're not going to get on any other show. These are items that speak of liberation, um, empowerment, entrepreneurship, wealth and resource and it shows the resilience of a people that have been oppressed for hundreds of years but still can go out and make t-shirts and make some money god dog it very true <laughs> very true it was a lots of people out there you can get a t-shirt that says i love being black it's a great show you're going to hear more from um the gentleman who made these t-shirts for a 50 dollar pledge we only have five you can get that at 510 
848-5732 or 1-800-439-5732. Now, if you want to, if you have the $50 and you want to get these unique special items, you can stretch this $50 over a year. You can put them on a credit card. You can put them on a debit card. You can send in a check. You can send in the money order. You can bring it in so many ways. We need you now. We need you to go to the phone. Full Circle comes to you every week. These apprentices work their hearts out. They don't get any remuneration for it. They volunteer, and they can't do it without you. 1-800-439-5732. We want to get back to excerpts. What you're hearing tonight uh, are excerpts from the CD. It's a wonderful compilation of people that we meet, and you probably know a lot of them. And so we've already heard from Clifford Williams, and um, we heard from Marilyn Austin Smith from All of Us or None. But to come, we had New Renaissance, Berkeley Public Library, the Black Organizing Project, Civic Corps, Schools, um, Front First Choice, Kumi, and much, much more. Mm -hmm. And lots and lots of music, great music. So because part of the celebration that day was music. So there's some great music to be found. There's some great voices with lots of wisdom, lots of love, lots of heart. And it'll give you a sense of the Juneteenth and it's going to prime you for Juneteenth next year because it is coming up. Mm -hmm. And later on, we're going to talk to one of the organizers of this event. Call us 1-800-439-5732-510-848-5732. Or online, www.kpfa.org. I mean, like we said, it's history that we're talking about here. How much of your history do you know? 26 of the first 46 settlers of Los Angeles were black or of mixed race. In 1781, in 1785, blacks and mixed race made up about 19.3% of the population of Santa Barbara. I mean, these are things that we have never been taught, and that's history here in California. And, I mean, these are things that we you can learn, you know. And we need to pass on. And that's the kind of conversations that were going on at Juneteenth, yes. man. It was like, do you remember the day? You remember when this went on? Yes. You know, oh, what you doing about now? Talking about Obama. Are you voting? Yes. Are you helping somebody? What you doing about the violence in the community? That's what community is. That's what that day was about. This is what we want to share with you. You can get a copy of this CD. There are several T-shirts. They also have a T-shirt that's considered a Juneteenth classic. Yes. It says 20. 12 Juneteenth and the number on it and along with all of these t-shirts you get a copy of the CD that we're going to compile for you of these voices you're listening to tonight. 510-848-5732 or 1-800-439-5732 We only have one person on the line please call we have several people in the room we're going to continue on with the show because we want to give you what who we are we don't want to just do a fun drive show we want to give you what we always give you and so we got the rest of the show to go and it's very exciting but in the meantime please either go online or call us I'm going to give out the numbers one more time one more time 1-800-439-5732 also at the 510 area code 8 Eight four eight five seven three two. Also remember, all you webheads, you can donate online. You don't even have to leave the comfort of your recliner. It's <laughs> www.kpfa.org. You can just go ahead and keep your carpal tunnel going. It doesn't matter. We all love right. you too. Donate securely online. All right, let's go on with the show. So we have been listening to the sounds from the twenty. 20- Fourth annual, 25th. 25th annual Juneteenth celebration here in Berkeley, California, held on June 24th. That's where that 24th came from. And we're about to hear uh, from folks at an organization called Farm Fresh Choice of the Ecology Center. And I have to make a disclaimer here. This is an organization near and dear to my heart. I helped begin this organization 11 years ago. It's about training youth to eat and promote and sell farm fresh organic fruits and vegetables. Should I make a disclaimer too? I love them also. Okay. <laughs> farm fresh is the bomb. They've been going strong and they've been hold they were holding down. And our um interview team had an interview and they talked about um why the work of Farm Fresh Choice is so important. So we are here at the Juneteenth Festival interviewing a, w- a wonderful woman that I know, Lunia, program manager of the Ecology Center's Farm Fresh Choice program. Cool. Nice. We love the Ecology Center at KPFA. Hey. So what, do you, what goes on over there? Wow. We have a lot going on. We are collaborating with Spiral Gardens over there on Oregon and Sacramento and reopening the produce stand. And so we got all these beautiful young people who will be out there selling organic produce at wholesale prices. Now, is there something that you want everyone to understand about the significance or the importance of eating fresh 
organic food? Is there is there a health benefit that people might not know about? Well, particularly young people, to have fresh produce that is absent of pesticides and all kind of additional hormones means that our children uh, have the potential to be much healthier. We can reduce the uh, chronic disease rate in our community, and we can be happier. You know, good food just makes you happy. And so in addition to uh, our uh, recommending that you eat healthier, we're also recommending that you exercise. So when you come hang out with us, we got hula hoops and jump ropes and hopscotch. I think I found some jacks in my pocket. So, you know, <laughs> we just taking it back because uh, once upon a time, that's the way we ate. Grandma would just go in the back in the garden and grab some collard greens, some fresh tomatoes or whatever, and hook it up. And now we are living in these fast food zones, eating a bunch of McDonald's and Taco Hell. I mean, Taco Bell. <laughs> and um, so we said, let's not do that. So every Tuesday you catch us outside of two recreation centers as well as the Spiral Gardens location. And we are encouraging the parents to, you know, to just, here, grab some of this. And, you know, you don't have to stop at McDonald's. We got something here for you. And we have fresh samples and recipes. So we show you what to do with that stuff. I'll definitely be over there. I like to eat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> before we go far further, we you have someone joining you who's taking pictures over here. Yeah. Can you tell us what your name is and what you do with Farm Fresh Choice? Um, my name is David. I am Farm Fresh Choice Market Manager. So um, I just handle all of ordering all the produce and making sure our stand, stands run well and that we got the stuff to, to feed the community and keep them healthy. And what you don't understand, because you can't see him, is that he's young. He's 21 years old. He's a superstar. He came just to do some hours. Came over now. He's just trying to take over. And I just, it's just been amazing. That's the wonderful part of our program is the youth development that happens. Young folks come in with soda in one hand and cookies in the other, and they leave. I love asparagus. I love kale. I love kale. I and, it's, and it's amazing because he was the one when he first, he didn't want to try nothing. I love tofu. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and now this is like the real story. Like he is like the number one person when, we, when we're trying new recipes, you know, trying and encouraging the other young folks to try. So it's like just amazing to see. And not only that, he was just doing ours. That's all he came for. And now he's like, I can't do it without him. Is there anything else that you two need to let us know about? Every Tuesday, 3 to 6, Spiral Gardens, BYA, and Bahia. And if you want to know more information, you can call us at 510-848-1704. Now, if they want to come and get some additional items... If they're looking for places to volunteer, uh, especially young folks, if you're looking for a great place to work, a great place to hang out and learn some new things, it's awesome. We got all kinds of stuff going. We're always doing health fairs and festivals. As a matter of fact, we'll be doing a series of four festivals, East Oakland, West Oakland, Hayward, and Livermore. They're called Get Fresh and Stay Healthy. So, yeah. That's awesome. What's your website? Ecologycenter.org. Slash Farm Fresh Choice. Slash Farm Fresh Choice. Yeah. Okay. But that's where we are. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. That's you. Oh, hi. Well, <laughs> you just heard Farm Fresh Choice. As I said, that's a organization that... You know, it's very near and dear to our heart. They're also uh, sponsored by the Ecology Center. That's trying to get everybody to realize that eating healthy is really, really, you know, it's important. It's something that we should all be doing. Um, that's probably one of the main reasons that I've chosen to live an agrarian lifestyle. You know, I grow my own grapes. I grow my own pears. You know, and that's, that's what I feel is, you know, important. Uh, next, we're going to go to a music break from Mark Wright. Uh, it was awesome jazz at the festival, so take a listen.
now that was awesome it was great like i said the atmosphere was culpable out there um to feel that jazz going through your body vibrating you that's what it's all about um now we're going to hear from a young man who took advantage of a great opportunity and now he works with the warriors basketball team let's take a listen and we have another person joining us. Can you tell us who you are and what you do, sir? My name is Jesus L. I'm an acrobatic slam dunker for the Golden State Warriors. And I also teach young kids how to do acrobatic slam dunking here in the Bay Area. So acrobatic slam, what is that? What is acrobatic slam? Acrobatic slam dunking is when you have a mini trampoline. And then you set it up on a basketball court and you run full speed at it. Jump off the trampoline propel yourself into the air and slam dunk the basketball and i have a dunk team uh, that i created called showtime dunk and basically the students uh, that i train from our youth program high altitude i take the students after you know we put them through different courses and uh, bring them to showtime dunk when they get good enough and when showtime dunk does shows those are the students that are coming and performing be able to make some money and you know travel the world how did you find out that you were good at that? How did you gravitate towards becoming what well, you Well, basically how the story goes is in elementary school, in fifth grade, right, the Golden State Warriors mascot, Thunder, came to my elementary school, and when he performed, for me, he blew me away because at that time, me and my friends was flipping in the grass all the time, right? But he combined acrobatics with superheroes, with basketball, with motivational speaking and put it into one and perform to Mortal Kombat so I was totally blown away at that point and I remember chasing after him after the assembly and trying to get in contact with him but he drove off so in middle school I ended up getting into this program called Global Education Partnership GP, which taught us how to be entrepreneurs at a young age and I was selling bath beads and body oils and little stuff like that. It taught me how to be really in tune with people and how, how heavy communication is. Like just, you know, being able to sit and build with someone on that level, especially if you're trying to sell them something. So being able to, to do that uh, taught me a lot. And then at the end of the program, they took us to a Warriors game. So I already knew that I wanted to meet Thunder. I got to meet this dude. You know, I'm 11. I'm I'm zealous. I want it. You know, so uh, I was like. I went down there, I made a sign, and I said, go Thunder. At the end, when I went down there, I asked him, I said, so what is it that I can do to be a mascot like you? He said, go to Head Over Heels Gymnastics, sign this autograph on me, and turned his back and walked off to the next kid. You know, because kids say that all the time. I want to I wanna dunk. I want to be a mascot. I want to do this. I want to flip. You know, but only few do try it or push themselves in that direction to get it. But for me, I ended up going home that night, looking in the yellow pages for Head Over Heels Gymnastics. The next day, I went down, got on the bus and went down there, and I talked to them about classes, and they said, oh, they showed me the prices. I was like, I can't do this. But then they said, we have a scholarship program. You know, if your parent comes and works off the hours around the gym, then you can come. And I was like, well, can I do it? Because my mom's not going not gonna to work, so I could flip. You know, it was like, sure you can. So I was training for a year straight. I called Thunder three times a day, every day. Left a message every time. The person who was monitoring this call finally got tired of me blowing up their phone, leaving messages all the time. It's getting mixed in with the messages they really do need to hear to make them not even want to check the voicemail. So he finally called me back. He said, all right, man, I'm going to train you. Okay. You know, and then he took me under his wing. He started to take me to Toastmasters speech classes. Uh, started to put uh, positive motivational books in my hand, like Zig Ziglar and Les Brown and uh, T.D. Jakes. Like, he was putting all these different things in my hand and teaching me how to be a great performer on the court. Because I do rapping, poetry, uh, acrobatic slam dunking, dancing, all of those different dynamics, you know. But he taught me how to be a, a well-rounded performer and a well-rounded man off the court. So that's pretty much how I started. I was the first person on the dunk team. Then uh, he started to add more people. Then when he had a, a solid core of people, he ended up leaving to go pursue his dream, his other dream, of being a comedian in Los Angeles. And I'm still with the Warriors. Two of the students that I've taught are on the Warriors with this now, so it's, it's really good. Wow, now that's an inspiring story. So many young people nowadays, you know, seldom have their dreams come true. It's really good to hear a youth's journey and a dream realized. Now that was just the awesome piece. 
Um, now, we also spoke to one of our vendors that had the best-selling T-shirt at the celebration. His name is Kumi. His shirts say, I love being black, which I love being black. So I really wanted one of these shirts. Um, now, it is a fun drive, so we are offering that T-shirt as a part of our Liberation Pack A. So call in, donate to us for that you know, T-shirt if you'd like to have it. 1-800-439-5732. 510-848-5732. Call in and get that uh, pack for $50 or just get the CD for 25 Yeah, online at www.kpfa.org. All right. Now we're going to hear from... Oh, yeah, definitely. We're going to hear from Kumi. Kumi. My name is Kumi Rauf of the I Love Being Black movement. We have a booth here at the Berkeley Juneteenth. This is about our fifth year doing it, uh, just setting up a booth, selling our wares. We have T-shirts and buttons and hats and onesies and, and all kinds of stuff. It all says I Love Being Black on it. I definitely support Juneteenth. Ever since I found out what it was, my parents have been bringing me to different Juneteenth festivals, you know, throughout high school and whatnot. Then in college and after college, I started doing the shows on my own, selling my T-shirt line. I Love Being Black. Could you tell us what, like, sure. what came up with that? I mean, really, you just kind of look around and you start noticing how people portray black people in the media and even how we treat each other sometimes um, and I said you know what I'm gonna make a shirt that's something positive that doesn't put anyone else down but lifts black people up and I said I'm gonna make it real simple just I love being black I made one shirt I wore it around campus and everywhere I went people were like where'd you get that shirt where'd you get that shirt I need one here's 20 bucks you hear that enough times and it kind of rings loud and you know what I said I'm gonna try this I'm gonna try to make a business out of it I ended up all the money I had even some friends pitched in uh, my parents, uh, cousins, and everybody. And I said, you know what, I'm going to do it. Um, in 2005, we did our first big festival in L.A., the African Marketplace in L.A., and it worked out really well. And Wow, it's been seven years since that first big festival. So, How would you sum up that experience for you so far going to like different festivals and representing a company like that? It's empowering to know that I can just take a small idea, something that's very simple that I didn't think would be here today where it is, and just blow up with it, you know. Uh, it, it's a very positive energy that I feel, but little did I know there's a lot of other people that feel the same way, and not just black people. We go everywhere, and people that are non-black will see me wearing a shirt and say, right on, I like that shirt, man, you know, and I'll smile and I'll say thank you because, you know, it's, it's not just about black people, it's about everybody, and kind of noticing that there's some things going on in our society, especially in America, that are not right, that are not the way they should be. Um, some ways that black people are portrayed, some things that black people are doing to each other uh, that we also need to shed the light on and, and, and kind of cut that stuff out too. But yeah, the festivals, man, I, I love it. I get to travel, I get to see black people, I get to sell stuff, I get to eat different foods and everything. Um, I love it. And, you know, I wouldn't change anything for, uh, I wouldn't change this for anything in the world. You said that I love being black as a movement. Have you ever thought about, or do you do workshops in schools and telling kids about what it means to be African American or tell them about their history? Mm -hmm. I've been in Oakland about two years now, almost two years. I've been to about five schools, been to Oakland Tech, I've been to McClymouth High School, uh, I went over to San Francisco a few days ago, earlier this week, to uh, Thurgood Marshall High School, they have a summer program out there, and just talking to the kids, telling them my story uh, from high school to college to corporate America and leaving corporate America and doing the entrepreneurship thing, and just, you know, telling them, just keep your mind open to what your dreams are and don't let anybody crush your dreams. I'm just trying to inspire them, you know. Uh, I remember hearing talks like this when I was a kid, and everything inspired me. So I definitely I try to give back uh, as much as I can. All right. How do you feel when you see people wearing your T-shirts? Uh, I love it, man. Sometimes I don't even tell them, oh, that's my thing. Oh, I made this shirt or something <laughs> like that. I'll just walk by and say, wow, that's a really nice shirt. I like that shirt. And I'll just keep walking. <laughs> and they're like, right on. They're telling me where they bought it. <laughs> this one lady, actually, she had met my mom. My mom, she's over at the booth right now. My mom and dad come to, like, all the expos, especially the ones in the Bay and L.A., California. So the lady was like, oh, yeah, I got it from the, the mother of I Love Being Black. And I'm like, really? You got it from the mother? You met the mother? <laughs> you know, I'm just like bigging it up. I didn't even tell her that was my mom. But yeah, I mean, okay. Uh, how has uh, social media helped you get your word out? 
Yeah, social media, man, it's been a blessing. Uh, 2008, I started the Facebook page, and, you know, it was slow. I knew every single fan that we had on the page. We had, like, 80, 90 fans. They're all my friends and family. And then, you know, slowly you start to see a couple people you don't know. And I'm like, wow, how'd they even find it? So I study up more on social media and how it affects people, how to get those viral messages out there. So our Facebook page is really our claim to fame. Uh, we have 5.9 million fans on our Facebook page, the largest black Facebook page in the world. And we get people all the time that come by our booth like, oh, I'm a fan on Facebook. I can't believe I'm meeting you guys in real life. And I'll never get tired of that. And now it's world renowned. I was in London last year in April just talking to people about what they do. And people, oh, I do this. Oh, I, you know, I'm in a band. Oh, I'm a painter. Oh, I'm a mom or whatever, and they asked me, what do you do? I said, you know, I got this I Love Being Black movement going on. They said, oh, yeah, I'm a fan on Facebook. I cried right there. I said, wait a minute, I'm all the way around the world, and some people already, they know what I created in college just on a whim. This is amazing. This is amazing. It's also awesome. like you're spreading healing, right? Exactly. Exactly. Some, sometimes we post things on our page. We do what's called the quote of the day. It's real positive, uplifting, something that's like, wow, I never you looked at it like that. A lot of times we use uh, African proverbs and such, and and people will comment and they'll say, you know what, that's exactly what I needed to hear today. I had a, I had a decision to make and I read that proverb. All right, that's just exactly what I needed to hear today, too. Definitely. Another African um, being entrepreneurial, sur- surviving and passing on love of pride. And that was Kumi. He was one of the vendors at the 25th annual June Teen Celebration in Berkeley, California. And that com- takes us to the end of our trip back in time. And now we want to look to the future. Um, Kumi is on the CD that we're offering for the fun drive as well to support KPFA and Full Circle. Yes. And he continues to talk about his travels in Africa and how his products were received and all the wonderful, exciting things that he, he and his company and his shirt, I Love Being Black, is doing. You can get a T-shirt if you contribute to KPFA. Um, you can get a T-shirt with the CD. So we're going to give out CDs with all of these packages. We have the Liberation Pack A. It's $50. We only have five. It has a t-shirt. I love being and, black. And it, it, which says, I love being black and the CD. And the CD is made up of a compilation of the voices and the music that you're hearing tonight. And much, much more. We're only giving a little bit of an excerpt. You can get this package for $50. And then we have the Liberation Pack B. Pack B, which is also $50. And we only have six. It's a different t-shirt. Same CD. You'll get the compilation CD that we're putting together. But for B, it is, and uh, I have all these pieces of paper in my hand here. 2012 Juneteenth. That's the T-shirt. That's the T-shirt. So it says on the 2012 Juneteenth. Mm-hmm. And then for the Pack C, the Liberation Pack C, again, you get the CD and you get a T-shirt that says Vintage Juneteenth. And um, we have 10 of those, and they're in all sizes, small, medium, large, extra large. They're for you. Call us, one 800 Four three nine five seven three two five one zero eight four eight five seven three two. Give us what you can. Five dollars, ten dollars. Stretch it out over a year. Send us a check. We need it. We need your help. We need you to go to the phone. We only have one caller on the phone right now. It's very important. We have volunteers in there waiting for your call. One eight hundred. Four three nine five seven three two five one zero eight four eight five seven three two. I'm so excited to come to people and ask them to support KPFA exactly. yeah. and support, in particular, this show, Full Circle, which is produced by wonderful volunteer. I mean, volunteer apprentices. I, I got it right. Yes, you did. Like Maya, who's on the board right now. Like Frank, who you hear all the time. Like Orca, who's with me today. Yeah. These people depend on you. Need your support. Please call us. Please one eight hundred. Four three nine five seven three two five one zero eight four eight five seven three two. If you have given in the past, thank you so much. Electric. And I'm really not even reaching out to you. I'm reaching out to the people that have not uh, donated before. Now the apprentices are the only ones that brought this Juneteenth uh, festival to the air for you guys. That's right. There was no KQED there. There was no uh, NPR there. There was no one NBC there. NBC like there. And if they were there, they were waiting for a riot. Something to some happen. Kind. Yeah. <laughs> with all the with all the and with all with all the with all the uh, police presence there. And this is not the first year, Orca. Yeah. We've done Juneteenth, and we are so lucky. To have joining us today, one of the founders of the Berkeley Juneteenth Celebration. I've been knowing this man for a long time. Uh, his name is Sam Dyke. He owns and runs People's Bazaar over there on Adeline Street. Hello, Sam, and welcome. 
Uh, good evening and welcome, Joy. Thanks for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Always a pleasure to support KPFA. <laughs> so, you know, I'm calling because I want to hype people up. I want them to enjoy the event that we that you had already, but I want to get them excited for next year, and I want you to get some help with it, too. Of course. We always need help here. Uh, as you know, uh, we just celebrated our 25th anniversary uh, Juneteenth Festival in Berkeley, in South Berkeley, on Adeline, between Alcatraz and Ashby Avenue, and it was a smashing success. We had a tremendous crowd of about 20,000 people out here having a good time. Everybody was here. <laughs> uh, this event is put on by volunteers from the community. Uh, who love the community and care about seeing a better community all the way around. And in doing so, they plan and work out the logistics with the city, clearing permits and the what's what that you can and cannot do. And every year it changes. We've always had Juneteenth uh, for the last 22 years on Father's Day. Okay. And... Um, in the last few years, the, uh, the city of Berkeley Police Department decided that, oh, uh, our officers weren't off on Father's Day. So they gave us a date change, and uh, we, we, we fought that for a while, and um, we couldn't get the date changed, but we're still working on it. We haven't given up. But anyway, we had a 25th anniversary, as they say, you know, when uh, when you're throwing lemons, you, you make lemonade, see? Yes. And uh, we worked with it, and uh, it's worked out quite well for us and um, for all the volunteers uh, kudos due to them that right. this has happened right. it originally started 25 years ago by uh, the merchants and um, solid community members who wanted to do something as a give back Right. Community. Right. Uh, all you hear of is take and me and just I and all that. Right. But we wanted to show young people that uh, we can do something positive and um, that's fun, that's exciting, that's warranted. And um, we decided to do something in, a, in the vein of a, a community festival. Right. And Juneteenth was the logical way to go. Right. For it's, us. it's great. Yes. And uh, in doing so, we've attracted so many kids. The kids from Berkeley High came out, the Berkeley High School Jazz Band, their um, um, drum and um, the, the, uh, the young ladies who uh, entertain you at the, the football and baseball games and things like that. Mm -hmm. And they had a dunk tank and, uh, you know, they were <laughs> I really... I saw that. Yeah. That was awesome. Now, it's kind of ironic, Sam. I want to go back just a second. Um, I know you support KPFA, and we're going to get to why you think it's important to support KPFA. But I want to go back to something you, you mentioned. Um, having to change the date of Juneteenth is pretty ironic, isn't it? It's almost like it's happening again. again. Um, we didn't truly get the true date of liberation from the Emancipation exactly. Proclamation, and we had to wait two years. And now they're saying you can't even celebrate that day, the 19th. You yeah. got to go to Father's Day. But... As you said, the crowd was bigger, and maybe there were other people who didn't come out because it was Father's Day, too. That, that's true. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's um, folks who, um, there are folks who show up on that day because they've been so many years on that specific date. And they've called us and said, well, wow, what happened? But, you know, we have to work with the cities. We have to get yeah. permits. And there's a venting process. And the trial and tribulations of trying to make this event occur incident-free because uh, you have to have the cooperation of the city in order to put on this kind of event. Right. And therefore, you know, sometimes, you know, you have to bend like the willow mm -hmm. and work it yeah. in any way you possibly can. You yeah. know? And, um, you know, some are disgruntled about it. And, and, and uh, you know, we'd like to have it back on that date. And we will work with it, whatever, you know, whatever is, is the situation. However, it's that we have had it for so long on that particular date that everyone's become attuned to it. But, um, you know, we're, we're still back at that um, situation and trying to change it back to what it was prior. Right. But as you know, we have, you know, as they say, the more things change, the more they remain the same. It's kind of ironic in the way, uh, you know, you see what I'm talking about. Right. We're still struggling. Yes, still always still a struggle. Very much so. So I want to say uh, really quickly that I know you support KPFA and you know KPFA has been out there in many That's of right. the years. Exactly. And t can you tell folks why you think it's important to support KPFA? It's very important to support K KPFA. KPFA supports the community. They're there when no one else is there, okay? So you have to support KPFA. They're, 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 they're stalwart for the community. 
and, and, and the voices of the community. So I, I, I want everyone, I urge everyone, you know, to call in and pledge to KPFA. Please do, okay? Thank it's you so it. much. It's a pleasure. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm looking forward to next year. and um... We're in the planning process of getting next year together. We've already started. We're... We're, we're recruiting all new community members, and uh, listen, everyone is welcome, okay? Yeah. And uh, please come down and give me a call. I can reach at air code 510-655-8008. And we love all volunteers. We exclude no one. You know, it's kind of like the event itself. You know, right. no one is excluded. We have a sliding scale. If you can afford something, we can get you in there, okay? Right. All and, right. And have you set a date yet? Yes, we have. Good. This is what I need to know forward into the future. I want to get ready right now. All right. What's we're, the date? We're, we're marching on to uh, next year, um, uh, Sunday, June 24th. We hope to get it on the um, the 19th, but if we don't, we'll we'll be on the 24th. It'll probably be on the 24th. If you know how the city is. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I their know. infinite wisdom. We're working infinite. it. <laughs> Thank you so much, brother. I really, really appreciate you spending your time and doing the work that you do. Man, I've enjoyed Juneteenth so many years. Fantastic. It's a wonderful legacy. It's a way to remind people of our history Hello. and to uh, build a uh, community. Yes, sir. I just we don't know. get together. Black, especially Berkeley, they ain't got no black sure. community. We're all stretched out sir. all over the place. Yes, sir, I just want to let you know it was my first time there. This is Orca. Great. It was great. It was It was one of the – I've been to a lot of Juneteenth. I'm from Pennsylvania originally, so I've been to a lot of Juneteenth festivals. But this was the this one was so multicultural. Yeah, it's off the hook. Yeah, yeah it, it is. Beautiful. Very good. Beautiful, right. beautiful event. And we're competing with Richmond now, too. They yep. had theirs on the night. <laughs> so there's um, a lot of liberation to be had, had, a lot of celebration. I want to thank you, Sam, for joining us. My pleasure. And I'm encourage people to support the Juneteenth Association and attend the event next year. Thank you. And thank right. you, Sam. Thank you. And if you want a piece of that, you can get the Liberation Pack, which includes a T-shirt that says "I Love Being Black" and a CD compilation of the wonderful some of the voices you heard tonight. We have so many more voices on there. Very true. You can get the uh, Liberation Pack B. All of these are for $50. You can get the Liberation Pack B um, with a vintage Juneteenth T-shirt. And then C is 2012 Juneteenth. So there are three T-shirts. They come in all sizes. We have a limited number. You can get those for a $50 pledge. As I said, you can stretch it out o over time. But if you just got $25, you can just get a copy of the CD, which has so many interesting wisdom filled loving voices a lot of music uh, we want to thank a couple of people that people that have called in and donated to us right now definitely i'd like to thank uh carmelita thurman of benicia and uh i just want to thank you for donating to us oh wow and that's okay. one of our apprentices mom. Go, that's pretty awesome all right and also we want to uh, thank charlotte regina uh, Charlotte wants to congratulate all in the apprenticeship program, and she also wants to shout out Leon, who graduated a long time ago. Right, I remember Leon. So Leon, thank you for, <laughs> I guess, creating a, uh, creating a memory of someone who said they're going to make sure they donate to the apprenticeship program. And you can join those two wonderful people that have called us by calling 1-800-439-5732. Please, 510-848-5732. We only have one caller on the line. We want to thank that caller. We want you to join them. Anybody who's graduated from this program or knows an apprentice Family. who graduated from this program or related to someone who um, graduated from this program, I'm calling you out right now. Please call us. Give us what you can. 1-800-439-5732. 510-848-5732. I got a lot of people out there always tell me they hear me on the radio. Mm -hmm. If you hear me and you know me, call us now. Give us $5, $10, $25, whatever you can. Buy a membership for somebody else. Get this wonderful CD. It'll be a great collection for you. Certainly it's good for history and the future. It's a great piece to play. It would be a great CD to play for kids in elementary schools and junior high just to get them excited about their history, just to get them excited about supporting the Juneteenth celebration and all the festivals that support and promote liberation and freedom. Exactly. 510-848-5732. We got two pe people on the line. Can you please go to the phone? I need three more people to go to the line right now. Get the liberation pack with the T-shirt that says, I love being black and the CD. The liberation pack B is a T-shirt that says, uh, Vintage... I'm um, getting those backed up. It says June 2012, Juneteenth, and the CPAC is Vintage Juneteenth. Now, there's another way I want you to let you guys know you need to support us here. Definitely at We're the end. We're going to do that at the end. Okay. Thank you so much for confusing me. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> We're doing one thing at a time here. We're trying to get people to call us. 1-800-439-5732-510-848-5732 or online, Orca. At KPFA.org. Once again, we have the Liberation Pack A, which includes the I Love Being Black t-shirt. We have the Liberation. That's also for a donation of, tw- of $50. Right. We have the Liberation Pack B that has the 2012 Juneteenth t-shirt and once again that's for a donation of $50 and then we have C which includes the vintage uh, Juneteenth t-shirt and once again $50 we need you guys support we have a limited number of those so call right now you can also go online so I want to say why I think it's so important um, to support this when you have something that's wonderful or exciting or different or unique or is your own, you tend to take it for granted. Mm-hmm. And we know that only one in eight of the people who listen to this radio station actually donate and support it. Wow. So I want to chip right now on the shoulders of the people who are the other seven, the other eight people. I need one or two of you to go to the phone right now and call us. Give us what you can. Please, if you've already do, um, give, given a donation to another show or at another time, please try and increase that donation. Buy a membership for a young person, someone who just graduated from high school or college, someone who ha- may not know about KPFA. Very true. See, we're not direct TV. We're not going to go and cut off, you know, full circle tomorrow. We're not going to go cut off uh, 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 Democracy Now! tomorrow. We're not going to go cut off uh, any of the shows that you want to hear. We're right. here to make you understand what we have to give out to you, which is this information. So call and donate to us. Yeah, we're not cutting anything. We're all talking about getting some support. Exactly. Buy one exactly. 848-5732. We need you to go to the phone right now. And so you, when you make that phone call, when you give us money, when you support us, it ensures that we will be here. And there are pl- plenty of people who enjoy us and send us um, messages, particularly from prison, uh, people who work at night in uh, old folks' homes, lots of places where people do not have the resources but do rely on this lifeline of information. But if you have the wherewithal, if you can give us something, 510-848-5732, 1-800-439-5732, say, hey, KPFA, I appreciate full circle. When I turn on that button, exactly. it's there. I appreciate democracy now. I appreciate flashpoints. I appreciate guns and butter. Exactly. I appreciate music of the world. We bring you so much information. It's so eclectic. We're such a unique place. This is such a unique green space where the community really does have a say. The community voices really do get in here. You do hear things you don't hear anywhere else. It is yours. It belongs to you. And we need you to show us that you care and you support it. One eight hundred four three nine five seven three two. And that's exactly what I mean when I tell you that we're apart from all the corporations. We're not. We're not. We're not corporately supported. We're, we're not supported by you guys. No underwriting. And that's what I mean when I say you know Viacom's not going to come in tomorrow and tell us that you can't have this. You can't have this. We're going to give you. The the information that we think you need right. out there. And you're the only one that um, directs what we need to do. Exactly. Now, we do have an announcement we need to make really quickly. Yes, I kind of got overzealous, but yes, I'm, right. I just wanted it to get out there. Do it now. You guys need to know it. Now, we're having a parking lot sale here at KPFA, Saturday, August 4th, Berkeley Way at MLK. It will be entertainment. We have books for sale, CDs, clothing, housing, uh, items, uh, entertainment, bargains, fun. Uh, for more information, 510-848-6767, extension 235. It starts promptly at 10 a.m. And it's the address is 1929 Martin Luther King Jr. Way. So we want to make sure that you have the number one more time. We're asking for your support. If you got a busy signal before, the lines are open. 510-848-5732, 1-800-439-5732. Five seven three two, and again, I want to thank the interview team that went out to Juneteenth and interviewed the people. It was Afale, it was Aquila, it was Joseph, and it was Orca, and they did a great job. And they were backed up by Frank, who is amazing, and backed up and backed up by Joy's delicious smoothies, which kept us energized <laughs> and moving. So that was awesome. Also, five one zero eight four eight five seven three two one eight hundred four three nine five seven three two. Get one of these T-shirts. Get a CD of all the things that we couldn't play for you because we need you guys to go to the line. Lots of wonderful, exciting stuff on that CD. I love being black. 
a young singing artist, Juneteenth MC, hey, some more from Jesus uh, L. 12 Minutes of Kev Choice. Come on. Come on. Join us. 1 800 439 5732. 510 848 5732. Online at kpfa.org. Support us. Donate. Be the people that keep us going. Now, that brings us to the end of tonight's show. Tune in to Full Circle, 7 o'clock, right here at 94.1. Our website is www.kpfirstvoice.org. Also, archive shows are at www.kpfa.org. Special thanks to our production team, which is... Uh, Tech, the interns, all of us, Yala, Yabasta, yeah. um, our executive producer is Miss M, technical director is Frank Sterling, we have Maya holding us down at the boards, our music is produced by Source of Labor, that's our intro, our outro is by B. Tandre. If you have any questions or topics for future shows, call us at 510-848-6767, extension 627, or send an email to fullcircle at apfa.org. Once again, at the controls, Maya, this has been Orca. Enjoy. And I want you to call us, 1-800-439-5732, 510 or safely online at kpfa.org. we got two people online. We nice. want to thank them. Stay tuned for La Onda by Hita. Thank you.